Here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra 100 bucks. And this is the word right here. You see the word? No, I didn't, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Thank you. Don't tell them. No, no. I was going to say, the Groucho will grill our first couple. Grill them? Is this a barbecue we're having here? <laughs> Groucho will uh, grill our first couple right after this word from our sponsor. Groucho, uh, Otho and Linjoy Pettyjohn are waiting to talk to you. So folks, you men please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and take home an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Oh, Otho, is that right, Otho? Yes, yes. Otho, and Lin, uh, Linjoy Pettyjohn, huh? <laughs> I thought Otho was that stuff they put around calla lilies to get rid of snails. Ortho. Huh? Ortho. Ortho. Yes, wonderful. Ortho. Are you two married? I believe so. Now, how did you meet uh, Lynn Joy? <coughs> friend of mine. Do you still that, regard uh, him as a friend? Oh, yes, a very dear friend. Uh -huh. Gary Mooney. Uh, Gary said that Mooney? I should meet this girl, that she was a real weirdy. <laughs> Well, how did uh, how did uh, how did it turn out? Was your friend uh, accurate in his appraisal? No, she's uh, really a tremendous uh, girl. Very exceptional. Very exceptional. Were you disappointed that she wasn't a weirdy? Were you looking for a weirdy? Well, uh, yes, so called. <laughs> and she turned out to be normal. That must have been quite a letdown. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happened at this first meeting? Uh, well, she asked me if I would marry her. <laughs> She's normal, all right. <laughs> what did you say to this proposal? Or were you oh, speechless? She was making a joke of me, so I said, don't laugh, uh, I might marry you. Mm -hmm. What was the next thing that happened after you, uh, you said, don't laugh, I might, I might do that? <laughs> I married her. <laughs> you know who's laughing now? Yes. Our mother. <laughs> now, were you working at the time when you nailed him? Yes, I was. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why did you want to get married if you had a job? Well, I quit working as soon as uh, he, uh, we got married. The same day? <laughs> what kind of work was he doing at the time? Well, he wasn't doing anything. <laughs> he didn't have a job and you quit yours. Uh, now, what kind of work were you out of, Otho? I was out of all kinds. You were out of all kinds. Could you name a few of the jobs that you were out of? <laughs> what weren't you doing uh, at the time, do you remember? Well, uh, window dressing and... Uh, I've never dressed a window, is it fun? <laughs> no, it's hot. Very hot. Warm work. Well, do you undress the windows too, before you uh, dress No, them? there's a particular person that uh, undresses windows. Uh -huh. What do they call him? He's a window undresser. <laughs> Seems to me that would be more interesting than the job you had, wouldn't it? Yes, but it uh, paid less. <laughs> what else uh, have you done that uh, you weren't doing? Art, Warner all Brothers. kinds. Art, Warner Brothers, uh, Camera Lab. What are you Diving for abalone. Yeah, diving for abalone. Uh, you were diving for abalone paintings, at uh, Warner Brothers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which no, of the Warner was, Brothers uh, had the abalone, do you remember? No. I read offhand. I meant that I was diving in uh, Laguna Beach oh. for abalone and lobster. Uh -huh. And did you ever catch one? Yes. Yes, one what? <laughs> did you ever catch a Warner Brothers while you were, <laughs> while you were diving for a bologna? No. In a... no. <laughs> Where did you go, to Laguna Beach? Yes. Uh -huh. Which of your many occupations that you were out of did you like the best? Living in Laguna Beach. Uh, <laughs> What did you do in Laguna Beach? Well, oh, just uh, live by my wits, uh -huh. so-called. Could you give us an example of how you made a living? Yeah. I had uh, rent-free for two years for, uh, for saving... For two years? For saving a woman's life. Huh? She w I saved her from drowning. And, uh, Where? Laguna Beach, in the water, out. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> 
Uh, wait a minute, uh, let me get this straight. She was out of the water and you saved her from drowning? <laughs> What'd you what do? You Grab her on the beach and pull her in the water yeah. and drown her? I had to have two years free rent. I arranged it that way. Oh. But, you know. What are you doing now, uh, Otho? Art, paintings, sculpture, jewelry. You make a, what kind? You make a pretty good living? Well, uh, not so good that I refuse uh, other t kinds of jobs, other types of jobs. Like what? Oh, anything. anything. <laughs> Furniture, r anything with... Uh, uh, money attached. With money it. attached. It's <laughs> illegal and... Uh, uh, <laughs> Can't you find another woman and throw her in the water? <laughs> well, Lynn Joy, I gather that you must have a job since... Uh, what I, kind of work do you do? I help him. <laughs> You mean uh, you push the women into the ocean that he later rescues? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? You help him. Are you an artist? Uh? Yes. And you're an artist too? Yes. Would you be happier <laughs> if he had a job? No, I'd miss him. I, <laughs> I, I, I like to get up in the morning late and see him across the table and talk to him all day long. Mm -hmm. Has he ever answered you? <laughs> Sometimes. What is, what is this bond between the two of you? Do you have any idea why you're so satisfied with each other? Well, Otho is the first man that I've ever met that I can communicate with. In other words, talk, discuss things, and mm -hmm. have an answer to him. It's most unusual. Most married couples don't want to don't want to communicate with each other. <laughs> Not even by long distance phone. <laughs> well, you sit all day and, and chat draw pictures and talk. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear how you communicate. First of all, <laughs> what do you call each other when, uh, when nobody is around? Well, I can't do it because there's somebody around now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't quite true. I haven't heard a sound out there in five minutes. <laughs> what do you call each other? Well, he calls me Tweaky Bell and I call him Boo Boo. <laughs> Tweaky Bell and Boo Boo. <laughs> is this all there is to it? You just sit around all day calling each other Tweaky Bell and Boo Boo. And that's how you communicate. Boo Boo? How do you do it? How do you communicate with each other? He talks words and I make sounds. Well, let's see. Could you give us a, an example of this? Well, uh, it, it's sort of in categories and it's sort of foolish. Well, you talk to Boo Boo, and then yeah. I'll ask him. That's me. That's me. Do you want to make a sound? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's horrible. <laughs> what, what, That's the uh, mating call if I ever heard it. <laughs> Boo Boo. Boo Boo, what'd she say? Could she have possibly said, why don't you get a job, you bum? <laughs> <laughs> now what is it? Is that all you say to each other? Do some more sounds. Huh? Oh yeah. Well, if that doesn't get him, nothing will. <laughs> what do you say, Boo? You don't care if I just call you Boo instead of Boo Boo. Right? I know it's more familiar. <laughs> For him to take the garbage out. Was that what that was? Oh. No, that was. That, that means was take the garbage out. <laughs> That's taking you a long way from what I thought it was. <laughs> now, uh, you're a nice young couple, and I'm sure you're very happy with very little, and I've enjoyed talking to both of you. Now, let's play your bet your life and see how much money you can win. You selected cities and towns of the United States, small towns. I'll give you four cities or towns in a particular state, and you identify the state. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Are you ready? Yeah. In what state are these cities and towns? Yuba City, Oroville, Pismo Beach, and Fresno. California. California is right. Now. You now have one right. What state has these places? Fairbanks, Nome, Mantanuska, and uh, Ketchikan. Alaska. Okay. You right. now have two right. Now, uh, here are the places. Uh, what is the state? Cambridge, Pittsfield, Chester, and Springfield. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Massachusetts, that's right. <laughs> you'll have three right, get the next one right, and you'll have your thousand dollars. Now, these are the four largest places in what state? Milford, Ellesmere, Newark, and Dover. New Jersey. New Jersey. No, I'm sorry, it's Delaware. Newark, Delaware, that's right. 
Well, you uh, now have one wrong. Well, you should have known that Dober is in Delaware. Don't get the next one wrong or the game is over for you. <laughs> yes. Now, Albert Lee, L-E-A, Red Wing, Duluth, and Mankato. What state? Montana. Albert Lee, Red Wing, Duluth, and Mankato. What state? Minnesota. Come on, kids. Duluth. Minnesota. You can't uh, say those over. Duluth and Mankato, Albert Lee and Red Wing. Montana, you want to say it? I said Minnesota. That's right, Minnesota. Oh, boy. <laughs> you now have one right. <laughs> now, tell me, what state are these in? Lockport, Fonda, Schenectady, and Tarrytown. How are you getting around my territory? Schenectady, New York. What are you saying? Hmm? Schenectady, New York. New York is right. You now have two right. Now, what are, where are these? Vicksburg, Greenville, Jackson, and Natchez. Vicksburg, Greenville, Jackson, and Natchez. Mississippi. Mississippi. Mississippi is right. <laughs> you have three right, get the next one right, and the thousand dollars is yours. In what state are Custer, Pierre, Deadwood, and DeSmet? Deadwood. Custer, Pierre, Deadwood, and DeSmet. Pierre is the capital of um, Dakota. Somewhere up there. Is that cool? Come on, kids. Pierre, Pierre. Oh, this is Dakota. Great. Say it. Is, it, is this what you got? Dakota. Yeah, but there happens to be a number of Dakotas. <laughs> oh, what is South Dakota? It's not Dakota. No. Come on now. Oh, you got a 50-50 chance. Well, just say South it. Dakota. Right. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> from Chet, or you can come back later and try for five or ten thousand dollars. Now go over. So I'd like uh, Shirley Hurd and Douglas B. Calderwood to meet you. So folks, you in please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your betcha life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred, uh, an extra hundred dollars. How do you do? Hi. Shirley Hurd and Douglas uh, B. Calderwood. Those are very imposing names, Mr. Calderwood. What does the B stand for? Groucho, it stands for Boyd. Boyd. B O I D. Oh. Why well, haven't you got a beard, then? You could be a boy in the bush. <laughs> Are you from Brooklyn? I'm from a little place called Yelverton in, uh, in Devonshire, England. Oh, right. Where uh, Dartmoor is, you know, where the prison is. Dartmoor, oh. What were you doing in Dartmoor? Was your father a guest uh, or a host? <laughs> <laughs> My father was a marine biologist. He was the uh, world authority on the su subject of the salmon. Really? Well, that, that explains what he was doing in prison. <laughs> he was studying salmon in the can. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of work do you do? Let me see. I've been a member of a small mining syndicate in Australia. I've uh, been an officer in the army in two world wars. <laughs> After the mining thing fizzled out, I went to New Guinea and lived in the bush with the cannibals. You really did? I lived with the cannibals. Right? You're lucky you didn't go to pot. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you doing in the bush? Were you looking for a bird in the hand? I was a member of the administrative service. And broadly, our work was to uh, bring the uh, wild savage natives into our sphere, sphere of influence, to bring them under control. You mean in civilization? In ci well, so-called civilization. They were just wild cannibals. And, uh, well, we go out. pretty exciting with those cannibals. You know? I got along very nicely with They're them. They're a pretty gay crowd, you know. They, they're trying to get you stewed all the time. <laughs> I'll get back to you in a few days, Mr. Calderwood. Right now, I'd like to discuss a few things with your partner. Your name is Shirley Booth? No, Shirley Hurd. Shirley Hurd? Shirley Hurd what? Isn't that an incomplete uh, sentence? <laughs> Actually, um... There was an old story like that in an old Henry story, you know, where the fellow wants to get a job on a sheep ranch, and the rancher says to him, he says, uh, can you herd sheep? And the fellow says, no, that's wrong. You mean, have you herd sheep? <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I, Oh, Henry wrote that. I didn't write that. I'm just, I thought you'd be interested in a little kind of a minor tidbit. Where are you from, Shirley? I was born in South Lyons, Michigan, uh -huh. but I came to San Diego when I was a year old. Uh -huh. And do they say uh, Shirley to bed uh, when you were small? You know, like Shirley to rise? I don't remember. Well, I'm, I'm glad I thought of it. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. <laughs>
Are you married? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You're a very attractive woman. Sally. Thank you. How long have you been married? Twelve years. Do you approve of that sort of thing? Of marriage? Yes. It's all right. Oh. <laughs> you mean you can take it or leave it? Exactly. You take it or leave it alone. <laughs> now, this fellow, where did you meet your husband, this chap that you dislike? Emery. Yeah. Emery? I don't his name? dislike Emery. No. Emery's real You're nice You're not nuts fella. about him. Yeah, I like Emery. He's fun. What you, what you don't like is the state of matrimony, is that it? Yes, I like that, too. Well, what don't you like? It lasts so long, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> We've been married a real long time. Can't you, can't you knock him off? And he tells sheep herder jokes. <laughs> oh, does he? Yeah. Oh, and boy, that's the lowest form of human <laughs> yeah, life. You know what I mean, though. Yeah. No, I uh, met him. Would you have liked me better if I hadn't told that old Henry story? Much. Uh, I was kind of disappointed. You're rather frank, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Um... I met him. Do you really care? I, I care you about know. you. I don't care about this story you're going to tell, but I have no uh, alternative but to sit here and listen to this. <laughs> you see, I happen to be glued to this seat. I was glad. I'm what they call the oldest stool pigeon in show business. <laughs> well, go ahead, Shirley. Huh? And I want you to uh, pardon me for uh, what do you want interrupting to know? you. I want to face your phone number because... <laughs> In the state of your relationship with your old man, it we seems to We should get together, huh? We, uh, yes, yes. You took the words right out of your mouth. <laughs> what kind of work does your husband do? Uh? He works for the telephone company. He's a deskman. He tells a the... A deskman. What's a deskman? Uh, he tells the fellows that climb the telephone poles what poles to climb. Yeah. <laughs> well, are these ten-foot poles or uh, the regular-sized poles? The regular size. Uh -huh. And do they climb these? Uh, these are pole cats, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, how does your husband know which poles to send the men to? I never asked him. I really don't care much about poles. <laughs> well, how do you feel about Czechoslovakia? <laughs> I don't care much about it either. <laughs> Jack, you dislike the whole continent, don't you? No. Does your husband like his work? Yes, he likes it very much. He uh, works nights, and you'd be amazed what you can do when your husband works nights. You might be amazed, but I wouldn't. <laughs> you have any hobbies like golf or tennis or forgery? I like to travel, um, especially Europe. Where do you like to go when you visit Europe? Oh, I've never visited Europe. I, I'd like to see Paris, but I probably will never get there because my husband's been there and he says I wouldn't like it. <laughs> well, you're certainly lucky to have a husband like that. <laughs> He's thinking of you every minute. <laughs> well, let's stop all this chatter, I think. Uh, and I'll, uh, we're going to play You Bet Your Life. You know this game, how we play. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack Megan is going to play some tunes and you tell me the title. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win a thousand dollars. Hi. Hi, how are you? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? Hope I can get. <laughs> Has there been something going on <laughs> between you two while uh, before the show started? It would do no good to tell you I have never met this lady before. Well, why this undue familiarity? You didn't warm up to me like that. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I kind of think that um, for years I, I've been like all the other women in the United States watching George Fenneman over a, that is your name, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> over, a, over a television too, but I'm here and I'm going to hold on for a while anyway. You, uh, you yeah. now have one right. <laughs> I'd love to. You call that a kiss? Mighty handsome fellow. I wouldn't kiss a dog that way. <laughs> this is really a dog. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is from the show Carousel. You tell me the name of the song. I loved you. Who are you talking to? <laughs> Anybody. Is that right? You now really yeah, have all right. that's right. right. Yes. I know that's You're right. Good, good. Oh, you didn't get to that one either. Now, uh, the second all one right. won an Academy Award. You tell me the name. Bippity-doo, 
Doodah. Zippity Doodah. Zippity Doodah is right. And you now have two right. Harold Adamson and Jimmy McHugh wrote this song. <laughs> It's a most unusual day. Ray Bolger made this one famous, but it was written by Frank Lesser. Once in love with Amy! <laughs> you got yourself? Yes, you, you got you sure. for yourself a thousand dollars. And uh, you, of course, can keep your $1,000, or you can come back later and take a chance in winning more money. You go over there and talk it over, and thanks for being on the show. That means that both of our couples can try for... Here are Otho and uh, Lynn Pettyjohn to give you their decision. Groucho, would you come back in, please? Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to go with the big money? Yes. You are? Yes. You take two numbers. You pick one number for $10,000, and you pick another number for $5,000. Now pick the, uh, what? <laughs> what number are you going to take? Five. Five, that's for $10,000. Put it up, George. Now you pick another number for five. Eight. Eight. Put an eight up there, George. Now if any other number comes up, the question is worth $2,000. Okay, give it a spin. Your numbers were five and eight, and it landed on six. Well, you certainly frightened me. So this question is going to be worth $2,000. Only one composer has been elected to the Hall of Fame for great Americans. For $2,000, what composer is in the Hall of Fame? Talk it over. What's your answer? The bourgeois, I mean, the bourgeois, I mean... No, an American, American composer, composer, yes. I'd say, um, Ira Gershwin. No, I mean, well, it was Stephen Collins Forster. Oh. Stephen Forster. I'm sorry you missed up, but you wound up with $500. That's that wonderful. isn't too bad. Congratulations. Wonderful. And Thank thanks for being much. with us. Sorry you didn't win, boy. You're good sports. Heard and Douglas uh, Calderwood, would you come back out here, please, and give us your decision? <laughs> All right. Oh, how do you do? Hi. <laughs> About up to here. Huh? Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to go for the big money, Shirley Hyde? Oh, all right. I'll go ahead. Well, wait, now look. We don't want to influence you. You don't have to. You can take your money and scram. I don't want to. I don't want to be part of. Uh, Okay, then I'm going to take my $500 well, and I'm going to San Francisco whether he says I like it or not. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs>